In this first demonstration, I'm going to show you how we can combine the simulation and prototyping phases by using some technologies in MATLAB that will allow you to visualize the data from your CC++ application, do some ex experimentation as well as some testing. So let's go ahead and get into Visual Studio. But before we start our first demonstration, I just wanted to mention that we will be providing the source code to all of the examples that I'll be showing you today. So this will help you to get started and allow you to focus more on the presentation. Here we are in Visual Studio 2013. And in this demonstration, we're going to be trying to work with a Gaussian filter written in C. So although some of the demos that I'll be using today are focused around image processing, the workflow and what I'm showing you really applies to any kind of domain. For example, signal processing, controls, it really doesn't matter what type of C code that you're working with. It really just showing you how to actually integrate MATLAB into your C, C++ workflow. So here we are, and I just wanted to show you for the sake of time, we already wrote this earlier, but this is our Gaussian 3x3 filter. If you look here, it's not a lot of C code, but this is custom written C, and this is a 3x3 filter. And the project that I have open here, and I'll highlight the key points, this is actually using a technology called MATLAB Engine API. And if I go to my help, you'll see this is in the MATLAB documentation under Advanced Software Development, MATLAB API for other languages, you'll see a section called MATLAB Engine API for C and C++. And this essentially is going to allow me to have a connection from my C code or C environment to MATLAB directly. And so you'll see some of these function calls in a minute. But coming back to Visual Studio, what I want to show you is this is just the comments of what I had to do to my project to allow this connection. So all I did was include the right path. This was in my project options to the MATLAB header files. Then I also included the path to the MATLAB library files. And then I included these libraries into the build options as well. So these libraries are built for an x86, x64 platform. And so once those are built, you'll see what I'm now going to be able to do. And so I've already run to the first breakpoint. And if you look here, I already have some of these MATLAB Engine API calls here. And what this enables me to do is actually communicate with MATLAB. Here, we're actually navigating to a particular directory. So this is like you were, would be at the command line. Right here, we're actually reading in an image. Over here, I'm actually doing some image processing and converting it to grayscale. Here, I'm just requesting the size of that image. I'll need later. And then finally here, I'm actually just doing a plot. This is doing an IM show call. So this is a visualization call. And you may not have seen this already, but this is our MATLAB command window. So by starting to run this application, this window will pop up verifying the fact that I have a live connection to MATLAB. And I'll come back to this because we're going to actually open up a full instance of MATLAB later. But coming back to here, I'm going to be able to start manipulating MATLAB, but I'm also going to be able to call entire scripts as well. Here we have an entire script. We're passing a variable. So let's go ahead and run to the next breakpoint. Okay, and you're starting to see some windows pop up. So here's our first I am show call. It's another one flew by there. So you saw some of the processing windows. Here we did remember our call to our script. In this script, we actually did some processing and some segmentation. And you saw me pass a variable telling how many threshold levels to take. Here's a printout of our image after we converted to the grayscale and then I kind of flew by this this is actually a histogram so again although this is an image processing example we could have easily called up a lot of our visualization tools to look at data to look at signals for signal analysis and scopes for equalization so there's a lot of different ways that we can again use MATLAB from our C environment to really help us as far as do some sort of debug as well as visualization all right, so now that we've run to this next breakpoint, this little section right here is actually pretty interesting because we've actually used MATLAB initially to get some input. We treated it to, to do an IM read. We did some pre-processing. But now, remember, this is a Gaussian 3x3 three three written in C. I now want to do that processing on that data that I may have pre-processed in MATLAB. So this section of code right here actually gets and retrieves the data from MATLAB. We now have a pointer to it in C. 
And now we're going to be able to actually work on that data. So if I run to the next breakpoint, hit continue here. Now I have these populated, these pointers. I have the image, the size of it, and also a return pointer for the output. And now we're going to make a call to our 3x3 Gaussian filter that again we wrote earlier. All right, so let's go ahead and run to the next breakpoint. So I did my processing. So now this is where we usually run to a common problem. All right, how do I actually start to visualize and debug my C application? It's really quite challenging to do that from a C environment. Well, we can actually use MATLAB Engine API again. And here we're going to actually do an engine put variable where we're going to push the variable back to MATLAB, store it as an output. We're going to do another IM show to print it out, get some visual verification. And what's interesting here, we're actually going to call a full script again. This is test Gaussian C, and I'll show you this in a minute. But we're actually calling some unit testing functions to help verify our C output to that of something maybe we wrote in MATLAB. And then finally, we're going to retrieve this variable. So we essentially computed a peak signal to noise ratio with this function. We're going to retrieve it and put it back in our C environment for the us to then maybe do some action based on this result. So let's go ahead and run to the next breakpoint. All right, and you just saw it fly by. Here's actually the output window. So this is the image after it was processed by our C version of a Gaussian 3x3. And subjectively, it looks fine. But again, remember, we actually called a peak signal to noise ratio function that we wrote. And I'll show you that in a minute. But we also retrieved its results. And if we go down to our watch a window right here to our local variables, you'll actually see here's a pointer to the peak signal to noise and it's a 30.58. So now we have more objective information and now you can actually make some decisions based on this result. For example, now you can maybe do some more tweaking, have some conditional statements, but this is a great way that we're using MATLAB as a testing framework and now we have some results that we can now take action upon. So now let's go ahead and cut back to MATLAB. So remember I showed you this MATLAB command window. So this is showing that we have an established connection between our C application and MATLAB. If I type desktop and return, what's going to happen now is we're actually going to bring up the full instance of MATLAB that we have been communicating with. So this will take a second, so I'll just time elapse things to speed things up. Okay, here we are in MATLAB 2015A, and as you see here, if you look in the workspace, we have some things populated here. So if you remember, we controlled MATLAB from using the MATLAB Engine APIs. We're able to import in an image. We converted it to the grayscale. Here it is. We can actually look at the image. Here, if we click here under Plots, we can do IM Show. Here's the original color image. Here's after we converted it to grayscale. So we're just verifying our data now from the MATLAB environment. And here it is in gray. And then remember, we actually pushed our output here. We can view that as well. So here's our processed image from our C implementation of a Gaussian filter. So this is great. So now we're in MATLAB. We can really dissect this image and see if there's any sort of errors that we might be able to diagnose. And then remember our little function, peak signal to noise ratio. So here it is. And remember, we retrieved this value and pulled it back into our C environment. And here's our 30.58. And if you look here, up here in the functions, so remember the first script that we called at the beginning of the code, here's the full script. So it did some image processing, some reading, some basic conversion to gray. We did some quantization to do the segmentation. And it also took in a variable that we passed. And then here's the little test Gaussian C function. So this was our little unit test. And if you look here, all it did was is we passed in a reference image. This is the original. We passed in the output of our C implementation. And then here it is where we ran the MATLAB equivalent. So this is the MATLAB interpreted code, which tends to be the golden reference as far as when it comes to your algorithm development. And then based on that output, we then did a PSNR call. This is peak signal to noise ratio of the output of MATLAB to that of the C. And then that's what gave us our value of 30.58. And this PSNR function came from our image processing toolbox. And if I bring up the help, I just hit F1 as I highlight the function. 
Here we have the excerpt from our help. All this is doing is peak signal to noise ratio comparing two images together. So you could very well have made your own custom functions to maybe do some analysis, but here I'm just using something that was built into one of the toolboxes. To summarize our first demonstration, so remember we're writing a function in C, in our case it was a Gaussian 3x3 filter, and we're in Visual Studio, but you very well could have been in Eclipse as well. But using a technology of MATLAB Engine API, we're able to now do some pre-processing. We were able to control MATLAB from our C application and environment. We were then able to pull this data into our C environment to actually run our application or function, and then we were able to push the data back out to MATLAB lab to do some more analysis and visualization in our case. So really what we're saying is, you know, leverage MATLAB. A lot of times this already tends to be where you start your algorithm development and it tends to be the golden reference. So use it to help with not only prototyping and new ideas, you saw how we did some pre-processing, you can try some things out before writing them and see, but also for the test and verification piece. As you're starting to do more optimizations, you're really still continually verifying your results and comparing it against the MATLAB equivalents. So again, you know, use MATLAB to create a powerful C, C++ test harness for your development. So you can simulate I.O., visualize, and test and validate. And you can have quick access to MATLAB functions to try things out before you commit to write them to C. And finally, the technologies that you saw today, we used Visual Studio. Again, you could have used Eclipse, and this is all for the x86, x64 platforms. And then the MATLAB Engine API, so that was what allowed us to communicate directly between our C application and MATLAB. And then I didn't show it, but it's something that you should take a look at if, again, unit testing is, is important to you. We have something in MATLAB called Unit Testing Framework. So let me get in and show you where you can find information on that. Here we are inside of the advanced software development section in our help and you can see there's a lot of different topics, everything from object oriented programming to calling external functions, but here's the unit testing framework. And what's really nice here, there's a nice video that shows you kind of how to actually set this up, but this is a class inside of MATLAB where you can actually write unit tests, so here's a bunch of classes and packages and also you can set constraints so there's a lot of diagnostics you can do with this entire class and here's a bunch of examples on writing simple unit tests and coming back and then when it comes back to running it here's the running of the unit tests again you have a lot of different ways that you can run it and actually do comparisons and you can set tolerances too as far as you know how much tolerance is allowed to between the MATLAB answer and your own so you can really compare things and really do a lot of analysis so I highly recommend for you to take a look at this because it's great to be able to not only start with using this unit testing framework in MATLAB but then extend it as you move into your C, C++ development and then being able to access it from other environments. And so coming back to our typical development workflow, you saw how we dealt with visualization and test and verification of the C, C++. Now let's move on to some of the other challenges, right? So earlier we saw how typically many product teams have large code bases. This is code that came from previous projects, previous designs. A lot of it has already been tested and proven. So of course trying to integrate this is a challenge. So let's we'll talk about now how do we actually leverage that and take advantage of that with MATLAB and to help with your C development. And then also how do we deal with not having to do all that manual hand translation of MATLAB to C. Again, a lot of times the golden references are in MATLAB, and so is there an easier way to get from MATLAB code into C? So before I do that, I want to spend a moment just for those of you who might be new to MATLAB, talk about typical benefits or typical workflows just from a MATLAB perspective. So first thing people usually do is they're going to want to access, right? So you're going to want to access files. This could be all sorts of images, maybe signal files, also software, right? You can be actually interfacing and talking directly to other types of software. And so we have, that's why we have other interfaces to interface to these third party tools. And then finally hardware, you can be acquiring data from other instruments, maybe it's cameras, maybe it's types of different logic tools. 
And then once you have this data, you then enter in what we call the exploration and discovery phase. So this is where you analyze the data, you try to model it, maybe look for patterns. Based on that, you might want to develop now an algorithm, something that maybe looks or adapts to these patterns. And then finally, application development. You might want to make some sort of user interface that people can work with to help analyze things. And then usually the final step is you're going to share these results. You're going to share it in the form of maybe reports and documents documentation. Maybe it's a form of connecting to other, again, third-party tools, so you're going to be outputs to be consumed by other design tools. And then finally, maybe it's the output in the form of, of deployment of maybe different languages, such as you want the translation to C, Java, maybe it's some sort of library. So that's pretty much the three-phase process. And also I wanted to point out, because MATLAB is a scripting language, automation is actually one of the key benefits. So you're able to not only go through this process once, but you can and script it to where it's automated to really improve efficiency and increase productivity.